So we're going to install Allen Bits on a fresh copy of an OS. We're going to sudo apt get install git. And that's going to install git so we can actually clone the the repo, the Allen Bits repo. Then we're going to do uh, pip3 install python.env. Um, pipenv is a shell environment we're going to use. So we're just going to install the dependencies we need in that environment as opposed to on our whole machine. We're going to go to the repo, the Allen Bits repo, and get the clonal download link and then do git clone and then that link. That's going to pull um, a copy of Allen Bits onto our, onto our machine, into our home directory. Next we want to locate um, that, that Allen Bits folder. I'm going to look for a file called .env.example which has a bunch of variables in which get loaded up when we open our shell environment. So we need to um, enter some data into those variables. So the first thing we're going to do is add a location for where our database files are. So that's in Ellen bits um, and then data. So I'm just going to use terminal here to get the file path. There's the file path for the, the folder on my system. So I'm going to put that into that variable, that .end variable. And the other thing we can change is actually extensions which we want to um, be installed. So we're not including, we're going to ins install all the extensions. I'm going to be using open node wallet. So we're going to change that there, which means I now need to add a invoice and admin keys. Here's my admin key for my open node account. You get that from the um, open node uh, website from your account. Go to integrations, you can generate API keys. It's fairly straightforward. And then you're going to want to save that as a .env, not .env.example. Okay, and then this, when we open our shell environment, it'll know to include those variables. We can also change the name of our Allen Bits install, which we'll do here just to just to see it working. So you can call it whatever you want. We're going to cd into Allen Bits. Then we're going to run pipe env install dash dash dev and that's going to install the dependencies of which we try to keep to a very minimum and then we're going to do pipe pipe env shell uh, to open up our shell environment that's going to load in those variables as well once we've got our shell environment we do flask migrate and that's going to uh, build all the database files and then flask run and that's actually going to run our flask server we're going to open this link and there we are we've got a copy of Allen bits running locally fantastic so we're going to make a wallet test to see if it's connected to my funding source which is open node but it can be this whole range of open of uh, funding sources you can use can i generate an invoice yes i can great uh, you can see here we've got all of our um extensions as well included now if we're using c lightning instead of open node it's just a case of changing the variables appropriately so we instead of selecting the open node wallet we're just going to select the uh, c lightning uh, wallet and then all we actually need to connect to our C Lightning instance, so our Lightning D on our system is running on our system, is just the the link to the to the RPC. Um, and we don't even need these these variables, which are down the bottom here, and get rid of those. And we're going to do the same again. So we're just going to run. Well, we're going to run Lightning D first, so we can actually connect to it. Then we're going to um, pipe and shell. Oh, sorry, save. So before we do that, actually, we need to save the .env, so we have the variables which we can load into uh, pipe and shell. Um, we'll load up our shell environment and then we can just do flask run and let's open Ellen bit see if it's working see if we can generate an invoice bit of a disclaimer there And we should hopefully, because obviously it'd be nice and fast, boom, we get an invoice. Fantastic. So if you're running LND on a Blitz or on a node, then you can connect again to the RPC of LND and have that fund your LN bits install. So just change to the, the you know the wallet to the LND wallet. Um and you can, you know, if you're running 
LND on your on your computer, just run it from there. Or um, say if you've got a Blitz, you can you can rely on bits on the Blitz. That's very easy. So one click install. One of my favorite development environments is actually to use Zap because um, you can connect to the LND running in behind Zap if you're just running the the desktop Zap. It's a really quick and easy way to get a um, LND development environment running. And it's you know if it works, it's pretty stable. We can connect to the to the RPC. We just need to put in the appropriate uh, port number. Which is slightly different to say uh, the RPC on on the Blitz, and then we need to put in our macaroons. So there is actually a document on how to connect to the LND running behind Zap, um, and then that'll tell you where to get your macaroons. So I need my admin macaroon. So to get the file path, I'm just going to paste the file into my um, text editor here, and I can see the file path. I copy the file path for my macaroon, my admin macaroon, and then replace, add that to the, the admin macaroon variable. Now you can also, um, if you say if you're running on the blitz and you export um well in fact the blitz is one click install you don't even need to do any of this it just does it for you so if you want to install this on a noddle or something um and you have lnd running then you can export the macaroons as a hex string and then use that for the uh, variable in this .env, um file if you want uh, but i'm just linking to the actual macaroon files um and then you know ln bits can go and actually fetch the, the macaroon uh, you'll also need as well because it is LND. You'll need that um, that certificate, that SSL certificate, which LND generates. So if you use something like Firefox to download the certificate to your LND, um, uh, so just connect to your LND, your get info endpoint, and then get the certificate. And I've put it just inside a, a one of the the, the Zap folders there, um, and then that's my cert. And again, I can just get the link to that cert, and I can put that. I can put that variable in. And then hopefully that'll work. We just need to, to fire it up. Make sure you save it as uh, the .env. I have actually got a separate tutorial on getting this Zap uh, development environment running um, well, I call it a development environment, but you could actually use it for, you know, production, I suppose. Um, uh, and I've got a tutorial, a specific tutorial for this running video tutorial on, on World Crypto Networks. So you can check that out. So let's run it, see if it's working. Yeah, that looks like it's successful. I'll, um, again, I'll see if I can generate an invoice. So now this is connected to my local copy of LND running behind Zap. What's quite cool about this is we can actually see, say if we generate an invoice, we can then see that invoice appear in Zap, in the Zap desktop client. And I'll actually pay this invoice as well so we can see it paid in the Zap desktop client. So, you know, a real world example, uh, a cafe could have a copy of Zap running on their desktop computer in their office. They could have a copy of LN Bits running and then say you could use the TPOS uh, extension to have a point of sale terminal on the phone. And there we are. Fantastic. We've got our thousand sats went in. You can see the invoice has gone through on the, the Zap desktop as well. So LNPay, um, if you don't know, LNPay.co is a, a really fantastic uh, custodian solution. Um, a little bit like open node but you don't need to do any of the, the the kyc stuff and it's got a whole bunch of kind of cutting edge lightning network tools available within lm pay originally it was paywall um to, to to make an account as well all you need is an email and a, a password and you just make the you know, email up if you want um you can uh, originally it was paywall for making paywalls but then um they had more functionality and now it's, it's just called lm pay um, and it's got a nice api so we get our api key from developers once we've made our account and then all we need to do after that is generate a wallet and we can get 
an invoice key and an admin key and a read key. And there's no limitation on how many wallets you want to generate. It's a really, it's a really neat service. So make sure you save it as the .env. And then we'll run it, see if it works. It's pipe pen for shell to get into our, shell, um, our, our shell. And then flask run, that'll run our flask server. And we can open up. Or install the VLAN bits. Now it looks like it's working, no errors. So we'll try and see if we can generate an invoice. Boom, there we are, an invoice. LNCX bot, if you don't know what LNCX bot is, is the, um, uh, lightning network wallet for telegram and you can bring it into telegram groups you can throw sats at each other it's a, a really good system um, so you can see how I can actually in the LNTX bot, bot itself I can um, make an invoice I can use the API uh, backslash API and I can get my API keys off LNTX bot so I can actually connect to my LNTX bot wallet and then we can use those API keys in the lnbits.env to connect to our LNTX bot. So now LNBits will be using LNTX bot as a funding source, which is quite cool because every time you, um, you know, receive a payment or, or send a payment, then it also appears in your in your Telegram. So make sure you save that as, and it's just the two keys you need: a .env. Open up our shell, I'll load in those variables, do flask run. Oh, one thing I forgot to change there was the um, actual wallet, sorry. So change. make sure you change the wallet there at the top or else it won't work. Right, so pipe env shell. Flask run. Let's test to see if it worked. Can generate an invoice. There we are, fantastic. We've got ourselves an invoice. Um, I run my Allen bits often behind uh, Ngrok, so some of the extensions they need, uh, you need to have a public URL like the Allen URL extension um, or um, uh, the paywall extension no, no no you wouldn't need one for a paywall extension but yeah for the ln, LN withdraw extension you'd need uh, something like ngrok so ngrok's just a an ssh tunnel where you can um, connect the outside world to your ln bits install and as you can see here it's relatively easy to get running so i just got it running from scratch there and now i've got a public url to connect to my ln bits can we generate an invoice yes we can fantastic um also, you could you know run LM bits on something like DigitalOcean, uh, so they offer some really nice cloud computing um, solutions, and so do Luna Node. Luna Node also accept Bitcoin, which is pretty cool. And on the Raspberry Blitz, like I said, you can run, um, you can install LM bits very easily by just uh, accessing the the services part of the menu and then turning LM bits on, and that'll just install it on your on your Raspberry Blitz. And you'll also give the option to run it behind Tor as well. It's fantastic.